Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the show. And uh, yes, I've been away a long, long time, guys. I think I haven't put hosted anything on YouTube for over a month now. And apologies once again, guys. I have not forgotten you. And I am still, res I do read through all the emails, guys, and I have been responding when I can. I've just been bombarded with work and I don't do this for a living. It's purely for a bit of fun and to share my experience with certain watch brands that I've had experience with and just to sort of like share my knowledge and experience and learn things from you guys. To be honest with you, I've learned loads by, you know, watching guys in the YouTube community and, you know, they've really triggered my passion for looking at other watch brands that I would have never considered before, uh, with all honesty. And, um, you know, let me just have a look at um, some of the emails that I have from you guys. Hold on guys, bear with me. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Hey Dee, hope all is well. Where have you been? We haven't seen you on YouTube for a while. Are you still making YouTube videos? And um, guys, this is why I'm shooting this video. I am still on YouTube, I still plan to do what I said I was gonna do. It is on the cards. I even did shoot some videos that I am still in the process of editing. I've had problems with audio. When you've got building works going on in your property, it is very, very difficult to get everything done. Um, and work's been manic as well. I have been on another YouTube channel as well, on the gaming side. However, I did start the A to Z recruitment channel officially. Um, we did a video, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video so you can check that video out. Um, it's basically just advertising my jobs. I just find YouTube as a good network for headhunting for candidates. You know, that was my initial thought process when I did YouTube. But if I could kill two birds with one stone and just talk about my, my passion for the watch industry and cars and just life in general, guys. I'm not here to push anything on you guys. Only thing that I may push on you guys to help me out on is maybe if you know anybody in the watch industry who's a sales associate or watchmaker or someone looking to get into the industry, I would love to hear from you guys, you know, and uh, that's what I'm all about. You know, there are collaborations on the way. Um, there has been a lot been going on, guys, I have to say. And this is just more of an update on the channel to let you guys know that I am here. I am watching. And uh, yeah, guys, there's a lot to come. But let's do a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing the Omega Seamaster 300 Professional uh, Electric Blue Version Chromato Automatic. Uh, I did review this watch. I think it was one of my last... Or was it the Rolex? It was the Rolex Datejust, I think, was the last um, watch I reviewed. And the one previously was the Omega Seamaster 300 Professional. If you missed that video, guys, have a look at my video list. Check it out. Uh, it was really, I really enjoyed making that video, to be honest with you. And uh, it's become very much one of my daily watches, to be honest with you. It's a tough, tough watch. Um, another question that popped up three times um, was... At the moment, in, within the watch community, there are a lot of comparisons being made with Rolex and Omega. Now, um, I don't know if you guys mean comparing the brands or certain watches. I mean, a lot of you guys, I take it it's the brand um, that you guys want my opinion on. And this is my opinion on, on both brands. What what brand do I think is is better? Okay. Now, I really do think it comes down to personal preference uh, Rolex as a mainstream brand is obviously one of the most famous luxury watch brands out there in my opinion I think it's fact to be honest with you people that know nothing about watches would have heard of the Rolex brand um, the Rolex brand um, is very much used as a status symbol in many industry sectors whether you are a rapper or a business a businessman, you know, a CEO of a large corporate firm. A lot of the time, you're going to be a one man watch. Your one man watch collection would be a Rolex watch of some sort, a date just day date stuff, whatever it may be. It will be a Rolex of some sort. Okay, and um, I think more the watch enthusiast. Um, consider Omega as much as they do Rolex not only on price or anything like that but because you know Omega have produced a number of iconic watches um, they are just a good quality Swiss watch brand in my opinion are 
competed with Rolex, but are a little bit more cost effective. Now, does that go against them that they're cheaper? Probably yes. But do they sell more watches? I don't know. I know in the Asian market, you know, from what my guys tell me, because I recruit in the watch industry, um, Omega are absolutely smashing it in the Asian market. You know, like uh, India, China, you name it, you know, they are doing very well. And uh, there are some models that we don't get, you know. Um, there are different variation models that they produce just for their market. So uh, they must be doing very, very well there. But overall, you know, for me, Rolex is one of those brands that you cannot go wrong. I think the biggest selling point when it comes to buying a Rolex is the resale value, in my opinion. Um, you don't lose much money on them, okay? Um, with Rolex watches, for example, the Daytonas, I've got some hardcore experience with Rolex Daytonas. I've never lost money on a Rolex Daytona. Um, on my Rolex Sea Dweller, the James Cameron edition, um, I bought it used. Um, I did try to sell it for the price that I got it, and I didn't have any offers for the price that I bought the watch. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, and it's made me reconsider selling it. Um, I did pull it off eBay. I had it for sale on eBay. I pulled it off. Um, it's one. Of, it's a weird one, really, because I really do love the watch, and now I'm contemplating: should I not? Should I just leave it and not sell it? Just, just keep it. You know, I've got it in my deposit box, my safe. It's, uh, it's not getting enough wrist time. I mean, I wear my Rolex. I mean, my um, sorry, my Omega Speedmaster. Uh, sorry, my Omega Seamaster. Pretty much all the time now. Uh, not all the time. Now I've got so many watches, but on a nice day, and the sun's out. The Omega Seamaster, electric blue. When the sun hits it, it just puts a smile on your face. And um, it just seems with my Rolex Deep Seas a bit of an effort. You know, maybe I need to rotate them more. I feel a bit lazy, guys, on the watch front. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. There haven't been any real new purchases um, as planned. But um, now that I'm back on the YouTube, you get that extra motivation to start looking and doing my research and stuff like that. But going back to, I am a bit like a politician, I do blag on all day, but um, going back to what brand do I think is better, Rolex or Omega? As a brand, if I'm being honest with you, as a brand, Rolex is better, in my opinion. It, it, it is a better brand uh, for what it represents. Um, Reputation-wise, and what people's, there's a bit of a stigma behind people that wear Rolexes as well, um, doesn't always have the best rep as well, to be honest with you. Um, if you're wearing an Omega watch, you just look like a, you like quality uh, wristwatches. If you're wearing a Rolex and um, someone doesn't know you, they, they're probably more likely to judge you and think that you're a bit of a shaft, you know, especially if you're wearing a 18 karat gold solid Rolex, Datejust, whatever it may be, a Submariner, you know, they're really, they're pretty much going to judge you. And I've had that in the past. And, uh, you know, especially if you see a young guy wearing a Rolex, you automatically think it's probably a fake Rolex or something like that, or something a bit dodgy about that guy. And, uh, you know, Rolex are a good watch brand. You know, there's no dispute in that. Um, I love what they've done in Bezel World at the moment, and I'll do a separate video on that. Um, I love the fact there's a moon face in the collection now, which was... That was sort of like the missing part. Why, why didn't Rolex have that sort of complication in the lineup, you know? Um, I know there are some old vintage models, and I'll talk about that at another point, but uh, you know what? Uh, it's something, even the Rolex Cellini, you know, the range, it's been shown a bit of love, you know? I have to say, it's been... Um, that that's that watch uh, range has been really unloved by Rolex, and... Uh, I think it's going to get some love it deserves because it really is at the bottom of the shopping list. When you're buying a Rolex, you're not likely to look at a Rolex Cellini. I'll be honest with you, it's normally the sub uh, or a Datejust and the most popular watches in their collection. You've got the GMT range and all the rest of it, but that very much is probably pretty much their most popular models. Um, yeah, a lot going on, guys, and I just wanted to reassure you guys, I am here and uh, there's a lot more to come on the channel. Uh, the next video that's going to come up, I'm going to do the Citizen Nighthawk review. Um, we're going to talk about Bezel World, the watches. I'm going to look at what you guys, what you've emailed me. I'll do a Q&A, get that out of the way for you guys. I hope today's helped. I am back, guys. So keep a watch out for me, guys. I have got a lot of videos coming through. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later. Take care.